Excited about the five star recruits our program is a video. Well, at least about uh, five star players that um, we ended up going undrafted in the NFL this year, uh, ended up being undrafted free agents. Um, and I, I picked this one because I haven't watched it, but I picked this uh, kind of you know, I watched like the first 10 seconds just to kind of see what it was about, but uh, I picked it because you know, I've said for, for years now that. Stars ultimately don't matter once you get once you get in college. I don't think they matter in high school. I mean, it may matter as far as NIL and all that stuff, which is like I said, which is fair. Get all the money you can while you can, but eventually you're gonna have to take that field. And if you ain't playing, that NIL money gonna shrivel up anyway. And those kids that wasn't getting any NIL money getting all the NIL money because they are verified and proven talents on the field, and they're gonna get drafted and all that stuff too. So. Let's check it out and uh, let's see what happens. Every year we get excited about the five-star recruits our programs land. Well, at least some of us. I'm an Arizona State fan, so I don't necessarily know what a five-star is, but I've heard they're pretty good. Yeah. Still, there are a lot of programs out there that land these five stars and think they're getting the next superstar for their program. Unfortunately, a lot of them don't pan out. With the 2024 NFL draft over with, there were a handful of former five-star recruits that didn't hear their name called. Before we get to today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe subscribe button and turn on those and notifications milk. if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are you love college football and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. We'll kick things off with probably the biggest bust on today's list in quarterback. I see it, Marta Day. Marta Day. We'll kick Why things off with probably the day? biggest bust Whoa, on today's back, list in quarterback day. JT Daniels. He wasn't even in the NFL draft pool because he medically retired from football after suffering multiple concussions. He told ESPN back in December that he plans to get into coaching. Daniels' career began at USC as he was one of the top quarterback recruits that USC had ever landed, and he was the second true freshman in school history to start a season opener. After his successful debut, things just didn't pan out while with the Trojans, as he lost his starting job. He transferred to Georgia, where he started a handful of games, but ultimately lost that job as well. He then finished his career playing at West Virginia and Rice. Over six seasons of college football, Daniels finished with 9,500 passing yards and 66 passing touchdowns. He was a, a million transfer. You gonna transfer like six times, man? Why are you transferring so much? having his best season in 2023 while at Rice, but that season-ending injury ended his career. Right behind Daniels for biggest buzz is Ayabe Anoma, who was one of the top overall recruits of the 2018 class. He was ranked number three overall by On3, number four overall by ESPN, and number seven overall by 24-7 Sports. Despite being one of the top overall recruits, he ended up suiting up for five different programs. He committed to Alabama, where his career got off to a pretty decent start. He earned SEC all freshman team honors from the league coaches as he registered nine tackles on the season, including two for a loss, while adding one quarterback hurry in 12 games. He entered the transfer portal though after being suspended by Alabama. He spent the 2019 season with the Cougars in a redshirt year before being dismissed for a violation of team rules. He then transferred to UT Martin the year after that. He finally broke through with significant playing time in 2021. And one thing I'm noticing, based on the first two people, and these boys are transferring a lot, a whole lot. Uh, and maybe that's the reason why they are viewed as bust at the college level, because you, you, you know, you, you, when you at a new school every year, every couple months, every six months, you got a new program, putting on a new Jersey, you know, it, it could, that could be a factor. That could be a variable, an unknown factor, an unknown number as to why these, these five stars, quote unquote, uh, end up going undrafted or not drafted at all. At all. He totaled 36 tackles, 9 tackles for loss, and 6.5 and sacks. He was named to the Ohio Valley Conference All-Newcomer Team for being one of the best defensive players in his conference. He transferred to Michigan the following season, but barely saw the field. He appeared in 15 games, but made only 2 starts, finishing the season with 18 tackles, 6 tackles for loss, and 4 sacks. Mm. He transferred mm. yet again in 2023, transfer. this time heading to Charlotte. He finished the season being like the second-team All-American Athletic Conference. 
he was the team leader in sacks and tackles for loss. Overall, he finished his season with 56 tackles, 11 and a half tackles for loss, and five and a half sacks. It was a great season for him. Not bad. And Where'd he ended it? up signing with the Chiefs as an undrafted free agent. Lorenzo Lingard was rated as the number two running back of the 2018 class, according to 24-7 Sports. He committed to Miami, where he had only 17 rushing attempts as a true freshman. He ran for 135 yards with two scores. After his season with the Hurricanes, he transferred to Florida, where he spent the next three seasons. Over those three years, he'd have only 26 rushing attempts. He transferred to Akron last offseason, where he had by far the best season of his career. He ran for 650 yards with four rushing scores. He also was a threat in the receiving Solid. game, catching 38 passes for 400 yards with two receiving touchdowns. And he just signed with the Jaguars. Tyreek Johnson was the number 14 overall recruit in 2018, as well as the nation's number one safety, according to Rivals. Mm. Overall, he barely played while at Ohio State and totaled only eight tackles while playing 130 snaps over a two-year stretch. He then transferred to Nebraska, where things were even worse for him. He only saw action in two games during his first year with the program in 2021 and didn't play any games in 2022. Then last March, mm. Matt Rule announced that Johnson was no longer for the program and wouldn't provide a reason as to why. And that was the last we pretty much ever heard from Tyreek Johnson. Akeem Dent was one of the top cornerback recruits in 2019. He committed to Florida State, where he appeared in games over the course of five seasons. He played in all 13 games as a true freshman and started five at safety, recording 35 tackles, one and a half tackles for a loss, and had seven pass breakups. His pass breakup total was the most in the ACC by a true freshman. As a sophomore, he appeared in seven games with five starts and recorded 13 tackles, a pass breakup, and a quarterback hurry. In 2021 as a junior, he appeared in 10 games and made eight starts. He had 44 tackles, an interception, four pass breakups, and a quarterback hurry. In 2022 as a senior, he played in all 13 games and made 12 starts for the Seminoles. He had 53 tackles, 4 pass breakups, and a quarterback hurry. Stop. Then in his final Is season with Florida State in 2023, he made 10 starts and appeared in 11 games. He recorded 44 tackles, had 2 forced fumbles, and a pass breakup. He was also named an honorable mention All-ACC member. He was signed as an undrafted free agent by the Chargers. One of the top wide receiver recruits in 2018 was Mark Pope. Rivals.com had him as the number 5 receiver of his class. He committed to Miami, where he spent the first four years of his career. He appeared in only two games as a true freshman in 2018, finishing with only one catch. Pope appeared in 12 games the following season, finishing with 18 catches for 260 mm. yards and two touchdowns. He improved on those the following year by finishing with career highs. In 2020, he had 33 catches for 400 yards and two touchdowns. He didn't play in 2021 and spent the spring of 2022 with Jackson State before transferring to UMass. He finished his 2023 campaign with 33 receptions for 400 yards and a receiving touchdown. As of right now, okay. it doesn't look like he's signed with the team following the draft. Kendall Milton was one of the top- Hey now, you better be easy on Kendall. All right, that boy showed out in that that we whooped up on FSU, but whatever. Whatever, we ain't go to the natty, but it's cool. You better ease up on Kendall running back recruits of the 2020 class. Depending on which outlet you looked at, he was usually ranked inside the top five among his position. He committed to Georgia and was named to the freshman All-SEC team. He saw action in seven games, rushing for 200 yards on 35 carries, averaging eight yards a rush. The following season, Milton's numbers went up slightly. He appeared in eight games, rushing for 265 yards with a rushing score. Then, as a junior, he ran for a career-high 600 yards with eight rushing touchdowns. 2023 was his best season yet, as he had a career-high 120 carries for the Bulldogs. He turned those carries into 800 rushing yards and 14 rushing touchdowns, both easily career highs for him. Milton capped his collegiate career with 100 rushing yards and two touchdowns, and was named the Orange Bulls MVP. The Milton signed with the boy Eagles now. as he's an undrafted free agent, agent and got one of the highest guarantees among all UDFAs. Our final player is actually from the 2021 class in defensive end, Leonard Taylor III. He spent- That may not be, it may be a little early for 2021. He still got a little bit of time. So uh, it may be an early call this one to bust, but let's see what you got. Three seasons at Miami. He was ranked as the number three overall player by 24-7 Sports and was rated as the top defensive tackle. He saw action in the final nine games as a true freshman. Overall, he finished that season with 21 tackles and was tied for the team lead with seven and a half tackles for loss. Mm. 
As a sophomore, he saw action in all 12 games and made 9 starts. Taylor earned all ACC honorable mention recognition for his season. Overall, he finished the year with 24 total tackles, 10.5 tackles for a loss, and 3 sacks. He had 1 interception and led the Hurricanes with 6 quarterback hurries. Then, as a junior in 2023, he started all 10 games he appeared in. He had 19 tackles, 3.5 tackles for a loss, and 1 sack. There I think I see enough of that, but... Yeah, I just wanted to watch that one because, you know, I just I don't put a whole lot of stock into stars and rank. Even though I have my own little ranking, grade book, whatever, um, those grades are for you. It ain't for the, the school. Even though schools look at them and say, you know, I like this kid, I like that kid. They, you know, they decide to recruit him or evaluate him even further. Cool. I ain't got no problem with that. Um, but those grades really for y'all. Uh, so you can see where you where you stack up amongst your peers. Um but yeah, man, those stars don't matter. There's a bunch of five stars that went undrafted, uh, bouncing around from school to school. I think the biggest uh, factor in all of this is a lot of these dudes were just transferring all over the place. Uh, and I think I have a theory that once you get to about that that third or fourth transfer, it becomes a, a talent issue, I believe. You, if you're just transferring all over the place every every six months, Maybe just not as good good enough to play at that level. Maybe transfer down and you know do a work do what works for you.